Move the agenda. We are going live streaming. Okay. Yeah, we just wait for the streaming to start. You can tell me when we're ready. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. The agenda then. Apologies for absence. I've received none. Everyone's here. Um, urgent business. There's no urgent business I've been told on. We have a report that arrived very late. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the 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 um, security framework extension, which I um, apologise for. It's uh, uh, mainly to do with the leader and things and getting to. But um, I, I just wanted to. I, I raised separately with the committee section about if we could be clear going forward on. Uh, I think it's COVID or procedures but making sure there's proper clearances on the report with the yeah, they get the right. so, have a look at that. thanks very much so any declarations of interest from members um, we may need to uh, conduct some business in private in which case if that, if that becomes necessary we'll move the resolution at the appropriate time um, if we move to the unrestricted minutes of the previous meeting of 3rd of july can we agree those as a, a true record? Agreed. Agreed. And then note the action plan. Noted. Noted. Okay, are there any questions only of that? In which case we can, oh, sorry. Just to note the yeah, action on item four has now been completed. So we can, uh, the contract will um, note that. So section seven, the Hackney Integrated Telecare service contract extension uh is uh who's going to introduce that is rob going to rob miller uh charlotte smith sorry so we asked charlotte smith to introduce the report i think charlotte's present virtually i am councillor chapman thank you welcome thank you um, just to give a brief overview of the report, so um, we're coming here today to request an extension to the current integrated telecare contract that we hold with Northbrook Healthcare. Sorry, um, sorry, just hang on a second, we're just going to adjust the volume in here, I think. We'll try again. I'll try again, is that better? Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank sorry you, guys. That. That's all right. Um, so I'm here today to present um, um, the report that's requesting a um, contract extension to our um, tele integrated telecare contract that's currently held with Millbrook Healthcare. Um, telecare is um, a vital part of our preventative offer um, and um, supports um, a large number of our residents, including um, older people, disabled people, vulnerable and um, people with disabilities, including children. Um, and it also helps us to prevent um, uh, falls and um, helps. It's mainly a reactive service at the moment. So we are looking to extend for a further um, 30 months, so 18 months plus six months plus six months options to extend. Um, we've previously had extensions to this contract. Um, we've done a, a number um, of well, um, extensive work really looking at the, the redesign of this service. Um, we've looked at insourcing, we've looked at hybrid options, we've worked with health partners to look at redesigning certain elements of the service to be an integrated provision. Um, unfortunately, the kind of consistent challenge that we have is with all the challenges we have with budgets generally um, at the council is that we haven't been able to make a a strong case for investment in this service as opposed to um, other services. Um, we have managed to um, successfully secure um, a increase to our better care fund um, contribution to this service recurrent um, that was secured last year, which has enabled us to um, afford the um, 2.5 year extension that we're requesting. Um, essentially, the time that we're requesting um, will allow us to complete the necessary transition that's already underway that we need to do for the service and um, changing all our equipment um, from analog to digital. Um, but the digital transition also um, has allowed us the opportunity that comes with unfortunately a necessary significant investment 
Um, we want to use the opportunity to turn this service and, and, and actually re-procure something that's much bigger and better um, than what we currently have. There will always be a need for a certain element of reactive traditional telecare, but with the introduction of digital, it allows us to widen the scope of benefits that we think we can realise for our residents, um, mainly due to um, an, an improved amount of data, um, a lot more um, different um, elements of modern technology that can really help us move towards a more proactive and preventative type of service. It will also help us to inform um, all the work we do um, in health adults and integration um, in terms of the data that will be available to us from individual assessments, enabling us to take the least restrictive principle in a safer way for our residents and also allow, allowing us to ensure that the care packages that we do commission for people are at the right level for them and really push for independence and strength-based approach. Um, so, that, so we're asking for um, Cabinet Procurement and Insourcing Committee to approve recommendation of ex awarding an extension to the contract with Millbrook Healthcare Limited for the delivery of Hackney Integrated Telecare for a period of 18 months plus six months plus six months options to extend with the full 30 month extension period being retrospectively awarded from the 26th of February 2023 to the 25th of August 2025. The total projected contract value for the full period is circa 2 million um, and 80k um, and this includes an estimated 204k cost of equipment um, that will be reimbursed by health partners. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Are there any questions on, on the report? The comments, uh, Councillor Kennedy? Um, I just wanted to thank Charlotte and the team for all the work that um, has gone into this. Um, uh, this uh, is an extension, actually, that it's retrospective, isn't it? Because the contract finished in February. Um, and obviously, I've been close to it as a responsible cabinet member. I wonder if you could just explain why because um, in an ideal world, we wouldn't, we'd be bringing this in before February. We, we wouldn't be letting it uh, have effectively been out of service uh, till September. It wouldn't be so retrospective. Um, if you could just lay out some of the challenges that have um, meant that we've got to that situation. Thank you. No, that's absolutely fine. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Um, so, as I said, one of the main challenges throughout this project when it's been with commissioning has been um, the um, funding issue. Um, we have gone down a number of avenues, as I mentioned, um, that are detailed in the report. We've worked, we've gone to health partners as part of the delivery group in summer last year, which was the outcome of the last part of work. And whilst we um, we were essentially asking for health to provide um, the additional funding needed for us to um, feel secure, based on our market engagement, we've done multiple um, uh, market engagement exercises over the last few years, and always comes back to the point of we don't feel that the available budget we have at the moment would um, achieve a successful tender and should we um, commit to um, awarding a tender with the current budget it's very likely that there would be financial issues going forward with that so we um, were still waiting on we had um, the last the, the last option we had was the request for um, better care fund increase um, and, and that just took a number of months. I think it was um, in, in August last year that we put the request in, but we didn't actually find out whether um, how much we would be getting and whether that would be sufficient for tender until May this year, unfortunately. Um, sorry, Leslie, you had your hand up. Do you want to come in? You're on mute, Leslie. You're on mute, Leslie. Uh, Leslie, who was it you coming in? Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I think it was just to say that one of our biggest issues is that the our health colleagues have obviously gone through a huge amount of changes. They've changed over to the ICB and it is essential that we have the financial contribution and the agreement of the financial contribution from them. But for many months, they weren't able to give that because of the process of change that they were going through and we've had to ask for an extension because even as it is now they are unable to give a recurring um, commitment to 
the finance of this service. So yes, they could give a one year commitment, but they weren't able to give more than a year. And this has resulted in a delay in bringing the paper, the business case to ICB. Okay, thank you. Thank you both very much. And thanks for all the work in putting this paper and the, the, the contract together. Uh, move, any, any further comments or questions from members? If we can uh, move to recommendations on page 41, section three. Um, I did note that there's a small element of uh, insourcing here in one post, and obviously it's a small beginning. And uh, while we understand the position currently, we would hope uh, over the longer term, we can see uh, opportunities to develop here anyway. So if we could agree the recommendations for three one to agree the commission end of sitting hackney to uh, the stop smoking service and um, three two, this isn't the stop smoking service. Oh, sorry, I'm, 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 sorry. I'm not doing very well. You've jumped. Three one. <laughs> if you read, read the recommendations, are set out in three one. Yeah. I've gone over the page. Yeah. Sorry, uh, that's what went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> My apologies, page 21, 3 1. It's better. Can you agree that, please? Yes, I can agree that, Chair. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. So now we move on to, thank you all very much to move on to section eight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, which is uh, the, uh, the stop smoking service. And I think Shahana Shah Pigar is going to choose. Shahana, yep. Shahana. Yes. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear me all okay? Yeah, perfect. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'm here today to um, present the stop smoking service. So we are requesting to recommission the city and Hackney stop smoking service for a further five years from the date of 1st of July 2024. So this will be in line with the scheduled end date of the current um, city and Hackney stop smoking service. And recommissioning will ensure that we have a continuous delivery of this vital service for our residents. Um, the target for the service is to encourage 1,600 people per year to set a quit date and for at least 50% of those people to achieve a successful quit. Um, I just also wanted to sort of note that there is a slight error on the KPI, which is in the business case um, under clause 6.10.3 and 6.10.4. Um, so this should actually say that as a minimum, 50% will be setting, 50% of people will be setting a quit date. Um, and so 50% of people should be achieving a four week quit, which means that after four weeks after setting their quit date, they are still, um, they have quit smoking and a stretch target of 60% will be in place. Um, we've also made some very small tweaks to the um, some of the KPIs which relate to the priority group. So there might be slight differences to the version that you see in the business case. Um, you'll also see in the business case that we've got a few different, um, we've presented some different options to you. And as part of coming um, to those options, we have um, reviewed the latest evidence and the best practice guidelines. Um, we've analyzed our local data We've done a detailed review of the current service performance as well as benchmarking our service against um, comparable services in neighbouring boroughs. We've also done some resident and stakeholder engagement and we've co-designed a new service um, all under the steer of um, the Tobacco Control Alliance which is very kindly chaired by Councillor Kennedy. Um, so as a result of this process, the option that we are recommended proposes savings of £124,000 per year um, and a newly recommissioned stop smoking service based on a redesigned service model and specification which does include an in-source service element. Um, I'm just going to hand over to my colleague Peter to take you through um, a couple of other key points. Thank you, Sahana. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Peter Vary. I'm a principal public health specialist within the City and Hackney Public Health team. I've been supporting Sahana and others on this recommissioning exercise. So just to continue, uh, the, the updated specification, which Sahana has talked about, has undergone numerous changes and improvements, which include reducing the minimum age of accessing the service from 18 to 12, incorporating the safe supply of MHRA registered nicotine containing e-cigarettes as a treatment option for over 18s only and to be used as a quit aid, uh, strengthening the community outreach and engagement function that's currently in place in the existing service to focus more explicitly on reducing health inequalities in smoking behaviours and tobacco related harms, 
uh, a fully flexible model that will, that will meet all needs of smokers, including strengthening and extending ongoing support for people to reduce the chances of them relapsing with smoking and to remain smoke free. Um, and to access a, a, a harm reduction approaches for those that want to reduce their tobacco use but are not quite ready to quit just yet. Um, furthermore, we, we, we hope the successful, we know the successful provider will, will be able to demonstrate that they understand the city in Hackney and its communities um, and are able to work with the council to deliver the priorities that we've outlined in this business case and in the post specification that we've been developing for the new service. Um, in addition, the new service will also seek to incorporate some additional work packages, which are coming from nationally cent uh, central government funded programmes, which include the recently announced e-cigarette swap to stop scheme and financial incentives for pregnant women to help them quit. Um, finally, uh, from me, uh, in line with the, uh, the current uh, Hackney Labour Manifesto ambition of having a smoke-free Hackney, we believe that this effective stop smoking service, an effective stop smoking service will contribute significantly to this ambition as part of a wider and comprehensive local tobacco control plan led by the local tobacco control alliance which Sahana mentioned earlier this will include continuing to take a coordinated approach with our, uh, our, uh, our colleagues around tobacco control in health and social care uh, as well as working in close partnership with uh, the local trading standards team on campaigns to root out the illegal supply and underage sale of tobacco and cigarettes within the city and hand. I'm just going to hand you to Joe uh, from our uh, Commission and Procurement team. He's just going to walk through some of the, uh, the, the bits on procurement. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, so just to give a brief overview of the procurement model proposed in our recommendations, yes. we're proposing that the service be procured via an open tender, including a find a tender publication from the 5th of September to the 31st of October. Um, and we'll also ensure that this opportunity is advertised through existing public health partnerships, such as through the TCA, which my colleague Suhana mentioned. Um, once the tender closes, a panel will meet to evaluate the bid, uh, including interviews for bidders who meet the minim minimum quality scoring on their written bid. And then an award report is scheduled to be brought to CPIC in February, which will then commence a four month mobilization period with the winning bidder. And this contract will be awarded on a three-year basis with an option for two further single-year extensions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the committee? Councillor Woodley? Uh, yeah, I just want to say I do um, very much support this paper. It's a really solid uh, report. Um, and just pick up on the, on the swap to stop um, and for assurances, I think about how the, the process of switching to vaping is managed. It's obviously, um, we don't want every smoker switch to vaping. So there are, there's a question around disposable vapes as well and recycling under the procuring green sort of element. So it's a bit of assurance about how that is managed and it's, it's made clear what's a safe vape, that it's a, you know, it's an option if you really can't give up rather than we're just moving sideways if you see what's in it. That sounded a lot clearer in my head. <laughs> Would you like me to come back on that? Um, yeah, thank you, Councillor. Really it's good question. Perfect. And uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely agree with you. Um, so the swap to stop scheme is still under development. We're, we're still yet to hear the final proposals from central government, um, and we are keen to support that. And we do, we do want to press home the fact that the e-cigarettes should be used as a as a quit aid and not for, as, as an alternative. So that's something we're very keen to reinforce with any stop smoking services within the city and Hackney. Uh, so yes, very important. And as you said, uh, we will be encouraging it, and it's built into our, our proposed specification that uh, that any any uh, supplied uh, e-cigarettes will uh, will will try to be a, a tank-style cigarette, so a refillable cigarette rather than a disposable one, because we recognise those issues and are also keen to make sure that um, that the new service will will uh, also educate people and, and any other suppliers around the safe way of disposing any babies too. So. I hope that, that goes some way to reassuring you. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, team. Um, uh, Chair, obviously, as, as Chair of the Tobacco Control Alliance, I've been very close to this. I think it's a really, really good and clear paper. Thank you ever so much. Um, and if there's one message we want to get out there, I said it in an answer at full council. I'll say it again, Chair. Our message to our smokers is if you do smoke, then try vaping. It's a great quit aid. If you don't smoke yet, don't vape.
Thanks. A very simple message around vaping, um, and vaping as a quit aid rather than an alternative is proven to work. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. Okay, well, uh, again, uh, I won't repeat my comments earlier, but uh, we move the recommendation. There's, uh, sorry, are there any further uh, uh, questions or comments from members? No, just thank you, Chair. I was just going to say, like, totally agree with uh, Councillor Kennedy. Um, just to note as well, like, as the environmental lead for for the council, we recently uh, supported the North London Waste Authority's uh, call for government to to try to discourage disposable vaping um, as its impact on on the environment, and that's something that we're considering in, in Hackney as well. So just adding, adding that as a little caveat. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So thanks for that. Okay, then. So if we can move to the recommendations on page forty-one, three-one. Quick, can we agree? And uh, no, I think the second section is. Agreed and noted. Right, okay. So then to item, carefully, item nine, the security framework extension. Um, I've always already apologised for the fact that it, it, it was late in circulation, but um, it's a straightforward report. If I can just say, as the as the cabinet member sponsoring it, that I um, you know, really welcome this report. There's been a lot of work done by the staff on. Uh, uh, work towards uh, in, in, in sourcing of a substantial part of this, this work, um, which is set out in the uh, in the report, and they're they're asking here for a, um, a short term extension in order for that that work to be completed. So anyway, um, I've half done uh, Rob Miller's job for him. I think we have uh, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Chair. Um, Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Um, I'll just also introduce Paul Saunders, who's on the screen there. Who's... Hi, Paul. Um, facilities operations and contracts manager um, and we'll answer any more detailed questions um, so thank you very much Councillor Chapman you I think you summarized the key points there the con contract covers security for council's office of state vacant premises the wider estate concierge on our um, housing estates and also events so it's quite a broad range of security services in the contract as Councillor Chapman said we put a lot of work into looking at insourcing options around this um, in line with the council's strategic commitment around insourcing um, We've looked very carefully at both current and forthcoming regulatory requirements, which do mean that some aspects of the provision are better suited um, for outsourced delivery, rather they're very complex for insourcing, and we sort of talked through some of that in the paper, but we've tried to make sure we've not just um, said, oh, well, we can't insource it because those things are complicated. So we've worked very carefully with um, the team team as well to try and un un unpick that. Um, the modelling in any case, insourcing would increase costs, so the details are set out in the report. Um, but like Councillor Chapman said, both our internal assessment and then also additional expert and um, consultancy support we've, we've had to look through the options. Um, I've identified a number of areas where we believe there's op opportunities for savings, which includes some investor to save, um, with the opportunity to reinvest some of those savings in an insourcing model. So, so we think there is a viable option to look at around the um, potential to insource what we're calling lot A which is a simple civic campus, our hostels and other council premises. And we think what we're calling lots B and C are more complex and therefore we're recommending that those go forward to a tender. Um, so what we're proposing here, like Councillor Chapman says, is an extension on the current contract, which would allow us time to do the develop, further development of that insourcing option um, and then the tender for the options, which we don't believe are viable for insourcing, um, with a 12 and 18 month break clauses in the contract so that we're not tied in for the period of the extension that we've indicated. Um, I'll pause there, but welcome any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any questions or comments from councillors? Councillor Kennedy? I, I had one chair, it's something that we come up against when we look at insourcing all the time and I wondered if you could explain uh, just a little bit more take us through at uh, uh, 5.14 in the report you talk about if we insource the staff numbers would have to go up from I think it was it was just under 120 to just over 140 what is it that us insourcing it means that that staff number rises so much and therefore it becomes unfeasible for us what, what's driving that would you um, like? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll come in. Thank you. Um, yeah, what's driving that is basically the um, council standard terms and conditions. So the the current uh, working hour for the, the staff is, or working week is 42 hours. 
So if we were to bring that in line with standard council arrangements, that would naturally drive up because obviously it's lowest by standard 36 hour week. Um, that would drive up those uh, those numbers uh, simply by the number of service hours that have been delivered under the contract. And in order to uh, fulfill all those service hours with uh, sort of with permanent uh, permanent staff under uh, council working working terms and conditions. Yeah. So you get the staff and not Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we should note that you know the further work done by external consultants to bring it, we hope, to a level which will be manageable in the budgets. Yeah. Um, any other questions or comments? Can we then move to the recommendations, which is to note the work that uh, has been going on, on the insourcing his contract and to agree the short extension is set out in three two. No, three two. No, three two. Agreed. So, Thank you all very much, and thanks to, to Rob and Paul for all the work on this. Which is, I know, it's, yeah, it's been a lot. Thank you. I had a bit more to there, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then, if we could then move to uh, item 10 the replacement of the unified communication as a service system. Um, and I think this again is. So, Rob, Rob, are you doing this one again? So, yeah. introduce the report. So, this this relates. Thank, thanks, Charles. This relates to the council's um, telephony service. Um, this is covering the telephony for our staff and also for our contact centre. So, the main points of contact for residents um, accessing the council services. Um, again, just to introduce a couple of colleagues who've led the work. So, Colin Cowdery on screen is our head of colleague experience. So, Colin's responsible for our common um, ICT technologies used across the council's workforce. Um, and Ron Zarman, who's on the um, call as well, is a senior digital analyst who's worked with Colin on the work here. Um, so one of the things that this report underlines is the benefits of our overall strategic shift to cloud that we've been doing for a number of years, um, which gives us greater flexibility, which I'll touch on in a second, resilience and security. So. Um, members will be aware that when the cyber attack occurred, our telephony system remained unaffected, whereas other organisations who've had similar cyber attacks are back to pen and paper and residents unable to, or customers unable to contact them. Um, because we had moved to the cloud, that then meant that this was separated from the systems that were impacted. And much like our other systems, like the email system, which was unaffected, and the website, we were able to continue to deliver some core parts of our services without them being impacted. So there's a, there's a big resilience and security benefit of moving to the cloud. It also gives us um, more ability to adapt as the market changes. Um, in the old and um, more traditional models, we would have spent a very large amount of money on hardware, which would have then gone into server apps that we manage. You would then have to run that system for a reasonable length of time to make that upfront investment in hardware worthwhile. With a cloud service, we don't invest anything in upfront in hardware. So we've got more opportunities to look at the market and adapt um, as the market changes, because to ship from a provider doesn't mean we have to write off or reuse existing hardware. Um, and there's also um, opportunities to support our sustainability goals. Um, the the large-scale global cloud providers have made really significant shifts towards um, zero carbon energy. Um, so again, in terms of reducing our environmental footprint, this move to the cloud in general is beneficial for us. Um, one of the other advantages for cloud with particular regard to telephony is after we have let the current contract, we also have the opportunity to move Hackney Education users onto the service, the cloud service that we've been using for our telephony. So we, we did that. We didn't need to buy additional hardware for it. We just needed to sign up to additional user licenses to accommodate those users. Um, that then meant that we were able to support our strategic goals of consolidating the number of systems we run, retire the old Hackney Education telephony system. So again, that ability to move to the cloud has given us much more flexibility rather than being constrained by whatever scale we bought hardware for under the old model, which might have meant we couldn't afford people on it. Um, so the contract with our current provider, um, telephone provider Vonage is still active, and we've invoked the extension um, allowed for that under that contract. That's still under contract. But again, because it's a cloud contract, we've got lots more flexibility than you might do in other contracts. So we've got a 30 day notice period on that. Um, and based on that, we've then been looking at the market. So we're in good time, well within the um, uh, time scale of the existing contract. So therefore, we've gone to the government digital marketplace and we've done an assessment looking at the options which are now available through that um, to consider whether moving to a new provider was the right thing to do. Um, and we've done um, a lot of work with staff as well, 
both the um, contact centre teams and their experience of supporting our residents, but also the wider staff base across the council services, um, trying out, you know, kind of how can we best support their use of telephony where that's what they need for their work. Um, and we've used that to develop the requirements that we've used to assess the options on the market. So what we've got in the report is basically a recommendation which looks to the digital marketplace. We believe by then by a, a provider which we can use, which will help us continue that strategic journey, um, continue to get the benefits of the cloud, um, in, achieve some significant cost reductions that will contribute to our um, objective of um, securing a balanced budget position, which I know Jackie is a very keen to see we do, um, and therefore the recommendation um, as to how on the report. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments from members? Okay, if we can move to the, make sure we're the right page, uh, the recommendations then on page recommendation on page 82 but just know that as well as you know, the strategic benefits that rob's just left out this all contract also um uh, uh, provides a considerable saving which is also very welcome obviously these big times so congratulations <laughs> <laughs> uh so we can uh, move agree the recommendations oh but could know there is exempt appendices here uh i'm assuming people there's no question or comments on these dependencies, no. right? Okay. okay. So if we can agree the recommendation to authorise the award of contract that's set out in three one. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Then move to item eleven, Kings Hall Leisure Centre refurbishment project. And then Hayley, Amy Craig is going to introduce this. Welcome, Hayley. Thanks, Chair. Um, so I'm joined with uh, by Justin Felton, who's uh, working with me on the King's Hall project, um, but I'll, I'll run you through some of the key elements from the report. So um, you'll all be very aware of King's Hall Leisure Centre as a facility. It's uh, both a social and historic landmark. Um, at the moment, it's currently running at about just under 4,000 direct debit memberships um, and also an annual throughput of circa 322,000. So it is a well-used facility, but as you all know, it is a, a facility that is in desperate need of refurbishment. Um, the manifesto commitment in 2022 um, committed to develop plans uh, and to continue, you know, the, the, the use of that facility for modern requirements as part of that commitment, and subsequently um, a commitment to identify funding streams and uh, approve plans by 2026. Where we are at the moment, then, in this report is it's looking to bring forward early contractor involvement through our procurement strategy for a design and build partner. Um, and to do that with a two-stage um, procurement. Um, the reason we're doing that is to balance risks. So the key risks in this project as a grade two listed building, uh, as a building that also has significant um, end of life issues in terms of a lot of its structure and its uh, MEP, and also has quite a complex um, uh, neighborly context with over about 40, 50 boundaries uh, to neighboring properties as part of that, that project. Uh, and one of the reasons we think uh, that an early contractor involvement strategy works for this project is it allows us to get a contractor in to really sense check what the costs look like, what the buildability looks like, and how we manage some of those interfaces. Um, now, we're putting this um, ahead of going to Cabinet for full business case and for financial funding approval. Um, and that is uh, very intentional. It's so that our contractor that we work with uh, in a pre construction services agreement environment can comment on our stage three plans, that's the design stage of it uh, that we will be moving into shortly, um, and that, that what we take back in spring next year to Cabinet for a full business case is better informed in terms of the, the true risk and cost to a project like this. Uh, the proposal then would be uh, subject to Cabinet uh, approving the, the funding for the scheme, we would move to the normal second stage of uh, the procurement where we work through a pre-construction services agreement uh in an open book manner with our partner to get a fixed price lump sum and that contract would come back to cpic as an award of contract uh, in the usual manner so the only difference in this is that we don't have funding approval for this scheme but, but mm -hmm. we have funding approval up until the point uh next spring when we would go to cabinet with the full business case in terms of procurement routes uh, we are taking um after a, a, an updated review we're taking the same approach that we did for britannia leisure centre and for the master plan so it's through uh, the southern construction framework um, which has nine contractors who have the relevant skills both from a heritage and a listed building perspective but also from a wet leisure which um, as we, we mentioned for britannia has always been uh, the, one of the key risks of getting contractors who know how to deliver wet pool environments um, 
we've been out and done soft market testing and had um, a, a, an expression of interest from three uh, of the contractors out of that framework. Given um, the, the, the scale and the risk involved in this project, we believe that that is a, a good outcome and as good an outcome as we would get were we to go through other means. Contractors like that were projects like, like this where they're quite risky, like to know the environment they're bidding in, they like to have confidence in that, in, in that, that route. Um, and there's both confidence in that the, the client team um, have experience of that framework. Uh, and obviously the contractors know who they're bidding against and, and, and as a fifth generation framework, it is a very reliable tried and, and tested framework. We are um, proposing, obviously that, that mini tender would go out to all nine, so it wouldn't just go to those that had previously expressed an interest. So um, all nine would be um, able to, to tender and on a quality cost split of 70% quality, 30% cost. Now, um, one of the things to be to be reminded of in terms of that split is that when we are picking a partner in a two-stage environment, we are picking them to be um, a partner that is collaborative and meets our quality requirements. And then from a cost perspective, the framework sets out um, maximum percentages for overhead, profits and prelims. At this point, they are not giving us a price for the project. That's what we do in the second stage in an open book environment. So it's very appropriate that that quality is set so high particularly given uh, the risk in this project. Um, as always, for con um, construction procurements, we, um, as part of that quality response, require them to get a social value offering, which touches on, on all three aspects of the sustainable pro procurement strategy. Um, and finally, in, in terms of budget approval within this um, report, um, all budgets are in place as part of the original 5.75 million that um, was secured in the capital update in 2021 for King's Hall. That's both for remedial works um, as well as the surveys and consultant fees. To date, that remedial budget hasn't had to be um, used. It's um, the remedial works that the leisure team have been carrying out in response to bi-monthly structural surveys has been contained within existing budget. So there is no new budget approval requested, um, but that amount is sufficient to get us to that cabinet fill business case. So the recommendation uh, set out in 3.1 uh, to 3 is to approve the commencement of the two-stage design using the solid construction framework, to delegate the authority of entering into that pre-construction services agreement to Group Director Finance, um, and uh, then obviously authorise Director Legal um, to agree on necessary documentation. As always with um, the, the, the governance for this project, um, it, it goes to its steering group monthly and it goes to the project board bi-monthly and they will be kept in uh, the, the loop on all papers and the, the delegated powers report for the award of the pre-construction services agreement. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I should say, obviously it's not so much an interest that uh, Mr. Borough Records that uh, King's Hall Leisure Centre is in the ward I represent, Homerton, um, uh, in which capacity I very much welcome this report, obviously, but although our, our role here is obviously our role here is, is somewhat different than that of a ward member, but uh, thanks for the report. Are there any questions or comments on it? Councillor Woodley? Um, just, just a comment, really, um, that you'll be aware then uh, within your ward just how important yeah. This leisure centre is to the, the local community and how doing nothing is absolutely not an option and i hope Haley's presentation has offered some assurances around the risk involved and how we're taking that stage approach to mitigating that risk as we go forward and um, it is a very complex site um so it's really good that we have that oversight board and we're able to check you know how things work as we go forward thank you very much and absolutely uh, councillor kennedy uh, uh, thank you thanks for the report um Yes, Chair, I think it's rare that we have um, a, a risk section that comes to us with um, everything read. Um, and it perhaps behoves us just to note that um, as we go forward. Um, but as Councillor Woodley said, therefore, it's quite right that you have a project board um, in place. And it's really comforting, Chair, to see uh, both Hayley and Justin on the screen um, because they were involved in our um, on budget, on time, pretty much multi award winning uh, Britannia Leisure Centre, and they're absolutely the people we want on this project. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think it, it just, just to clear, uh, my understanding of the stage we're at here is to, uh, we, we're commencing the two stage uh, design and build procurement 
project. Uh, and at this the point, this this report is to get a contractor on board, basically, so they can involve themselves in the design process and uh, uh, build up, uh, you know, the, the proper uh, um, the design and uh, specifications of the of the project for a report back to cabinet for a final decision, well, not final, decision, but for the main decision in spring, I think. Is that yes. correct? That, that's absolutely correct. So, um, sub subject to this discussion, we would issue the tender documentation, which is ready to go in the next couple of days. And effectively, that would have a, a contractor that was on board and a pre construction services agreement signed by the end of January. They would then spend February and March reviewing our stage three design that the team would concurrently have developed. Uh, and that would feed into a report to cabinet on uh, the, the full business case for the scheme at that point. Uh, and albeit it, it, it's a sense check from the contractor, it would put us in a better position around the risks and uh, around cost um, and deliverability than if we didn't have a contractor at that point before we went to cabinet. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any further questions or comments from members? So if we could turn the recommendation to the recommendations of page 98, um, and we're asked to uh, agree the recommendations set out 3.1 to 3.3 and note the recommendations set out 3.4 to 3.6. Are we happy to do that? Yeah, no, agreed and noted. Thank you. And if I can thank Hayley Craig and the team for all the work they've, uh, and German, for all the work they've undertaken so far and uh, wish them well for all the work still to come. Thank you. Thanks. Thank and uh, you're absolutely endorsed what Councillor Woodley said earlier. Okay then, so if we can move now, with that, we're not going to consider the uh, confidential items because we've decided that already. So if we can move them, I think. Um, what's that? Oh, the forward plan, okay. Yeah, so just to note then, the next meeting of the committee will be on the 9th of October and um, we've included a forward plan for that. Uh, where is it? Can we send this to members? Yes. Yeah, I've been sent to members. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I thought you were. Um, I don't know. How are we now? Um, I know. I can't think. Are you talking about those? Oh, here we are. Um,